how would it affect you know our river especially with the location that that is there and so one of the things that they assured us is that they're you know extremely organic and that the because i was i was concerned because of runoff you know, um, with any company, there's always some kind of runoff, and so what? How can that get back the river and whatnot? Because I wanted to ask those questions up front. You know, before yes, we have a lot of ordinances in place, but we want to make sure prior that these problems won't, you know, arise and become an issue for us. And so they they are aware of that. They have um, systems to test for that, and. Um, they were very clear that the, the natural resources were important. Can I have one more thing, Chair? Councilmember Bolt. Um, yeah, so when we're thinking about this area um, that's been vacant for a long time, and I've certainly heard that being the new council person of um, an investment we did in a building down at uh, Requa, and it's sitting there empty. And that, I think, bothers all of us because um, we've invested our time, money, and energy into creating a place for us to do some fisheries um, uh, economic development. And, and with the last few years, we know that that hasn't happened for us. Um, so this is an opportunity to use a vacant building for something, even as a pilot project. And we'll certainly do our best to protect our river, protect the area, protect the cultural sites that are there. Um, but it is an opportunity to use a vacant building for something. Until the time, and I think we're all behind this at this council, those dams are going to come down. And we are going to be so excited when that happens because our river is going to flow again with fish. And at one time, we'll be able to have a fish processing or at least some ice and some more machines and things like that to uh, create a space to have our fish again thrive in that river. So um, I just wanted to share that we have not forgotten the um, importance of that building as a fish place for us because we are fisher people. And we don't want to ever forget that. But this gives us a pilot time to use that that could be uh, beneficial to us as a tribal, uh, tribal um, entity. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. I got a council member, Robert. The oh, reason why I'm so passionate about this is my mother had dementia. She passed away in 2010. If it wasn't for that aspect of the medical of the plant, I would never have my mom for six months. It was very precious. I don't know if you ever had to deal with anybody with dementia, but it is a nightmare for a person, for both sides, the, the patient and, and the family. And this is why I'm so passionate for this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Robert. Uh, with, I'd like to, uh, that completes the presentation side of it for us on council and, and staff. I would like to open the floor up for a uh, travel member comment. I would ask if, or if our travel members could please go over on the chair if you want to, because then Mr. Mays could be able to capture the, the, the sound and stuff like that. So. <laughs> And please state your name and, and the residence for the record. Okay. All right. 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 All my name is Justin Woods. I'm a tribal member and my family comes from the, the village of Chopek here in Oric. And um, I would just like to echo what Councilwoman uh, Provault, my mom said, thank you for the council for coming out here. It, it does, it, it means a lot for us. We're a small district, but <laughs> anytime you can devote this kind of resource and mobilization to coming out here to talk to us, it's an important thing. And I, I just want you guys to know I appreciate that. I should probably qualify anything I'm going to say is I'm not anti-cannabis by any stretch. Like I, I understand and what uh, council member Aubrey says resonates with me. I, I get that. Like I understand that. So, um, Papa and Barkley, that's not a, it's not really a mom and pop operation. You know, they're, uh, they're legit. When I first heard their name, I did some research on them. 
that's a profitable company. That's a, that's a big money-making company. And so the first question that came to mind for me was, what do they have to gain from partnering with us? You know, what is it that we can offer them that they can't do themselves or get somewhere else? And I'm sure that's a very complicated answer and I'm not looking for specifics. You so I, thank you, Justin, for your comment. I think that the big incentives now with the Farm Bill, it puts tribes equivalent with the federal government. We don't have to go for the county, we don't have to go for the state. So we gotta work with the state. But there is tax incentives and opportunities to create a business on the reservation. <laughs> we're saying we're, we're gonna get our fees and taxes, are, but, right. but it's not going to be where we tax them out of the business and so there is that that opportunity because when you come in to us there are certain things that we get a leverage partner with the other specifically regarding that that tent. if they can make more money and we make money oh, it's sure. a good business so oh, i think sure. i think that's the that's the big answer yeah, yeah. to that and uh so my only follow-up with that would be so is it a tax thing is this is this primarily a tax thing when it comes to the 2018 farm bill or is this an interstate commerce thing like so which which one of those is it? It, it it's both at the end of the day i think uh the answer is actually pretty pretty simple it is tax incentives. Okay. that's that's the biggest that's the number for, one for companies looking to uh find their way through through the hemp industry tax incentives for for tribes is the the big motivating factor uh, but also the uh, the interstate commerce is also the, the, the next one between those two and i think those were some of the comments i had made before about you know, we need to be realistic about what we're bringing to the table. Yeah, that's what we're bringing to the table. That's, that's huge. Our sovereignty, absolutely, is what we're bringing to the table. Hundred percent. So, and I don't feel like it's leveraging sovereignty or anything like that, but I know that that's the fear. Yeah. You know, anytime we talk about putting our sovereignty on the negotiating table, it it feels weird, and I understand that there's some pushback with that. You know, but I just want everyone to you know understand. We need to have that conversation. That needs to be up front. You know, taxes. For sure. I mean, it happens in all kinds of industries. Tax breaks, that's why they film movies in New Mexico, because it's cheaper to do it there than Hollywood. You know, I get it. Um, if that's what it is, that's fine. The commerce thing. The other question I had was uh, cultivation, cultivation or importing? You know, so are we growing or are we bringing it in? For the, the, for the hemp part, for, for, yeah, for proposal possible. for processing, we're importing. We're importing. So we're not cultivating at this point. We don't have... Not, let me, let me be transparent, humble seed is looking to uh, produce hemp. You've got to cultivate on a small scale to obviously produce the seeds, right? You gotta grow the plant to produce the seeds off the plant. Yeah. Uh, we're looking at potential greenhouses for that in a controlled area, uh, but a produce, produce enough seeds, whether it's a million up to three million seeds. Um, so I wanna be full transparent yeah. with you. Well, because importation is one thing and cultivation is another. Like, so with the whole host of problems and solutions that come with each one. So I, I get that. Sure. I think these are why the two, these two avenues make the most sense for, for the tribe. One, the scale at which you have to cultivate, if you want to do cultivation and processing, right. is, is way more than anything that, that we want to see on our river. And so for the processing, that's, that's important. Uh, for the hemp seed, that scale is 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 a, is a micro scale. Much smaller. It's very very yeah, small right. footprint. That makes sense. And so that will the, the, that cultivation would occur for the hemp seed production. On the scale side of that match, the vice chair, we are looking at three thousand to up to five thousand square feet for a scale wise, you know, um, for a scale regarding the hemp seed. With, with the seed, okay. yeah. So which yeah, is three to five thousand foot foot acres for yeah. the process. Yeah, which is. Substantially smaller than cultivation of virtually anything. Else. Correct. Um, no. And then the numbers, right? The the numbers bear out. Like that's all I think people are worried about is you know certainly what I'm worried about is this economically feasible? Is this something that I don't have all the numbers? I don't I haven't done all the research that I should should have done. But that's why I'm asking you guys. And I assume you guys are doing all that. But it feels like a saturated market, and I don't know that. I don't know that. I'm, I'm just looking at trends. You know, hemp is, like you said, nothing new. I grew up in the 90s. That was a big deal. Like, it was a lot of fashion stuff in those days of people wearing hemp and hemp backpacks. I mean, this is not anything new. Um, but with the legislation on a national level that's, that's turning from prohibition to, to the repeal of that prohibition, is it a saturated market at this point? Or is it trending in that direction so quickly that we may have missed an opportunity here? Like, if this would have been something for us to get into seven years ago as opposed to 2019. 
that I think is maybe just the other the other concern I have about the whole thing. But again, I know that's not really an answer that you guys have right here, but just know that I think that, and I've heard that from, from a lot of people. Okay, they're not sure. worried about it. I think that's a, that's, a, that's a very valid question. One of the things that um, was driving the tribal input for the formula for, for him is to allow tribes to be first to market. And I think um, if you look at the, the hemp industry as a whole, there are um, skews that are, that are saturated. But as a whole, as an industry, most of it is, is a growing economy. And most of, it, most of the industry is fairly fresh in its infancy. Um, and so, although if you are looking at some, yeah, some they, are, some are, but the industry as a whole, uh, absolutely not. Uh, now we haven't even come close to um, reaching any sort of demand point that would okay. that would affect our our, uh, our business decision. So I think uh, getting in early, being first to market, um, if this is the way we want to go, <clears throat> it is crucial. And I think uh, Congress recognized that. Um, looking at, and although this isn't necessarily the same, looking at the war on drugs and the effects it had to uh, people of color, it also was a driving factor of why Congress wanted to make sure that tribes were included in this uh, hemp industry with the ability to be first to market. How open does the ordinance leave us to cannabis cultivation, not just hemp? So the, the hemp ordinance doesn't uh, preclude, doesn't necessarily cover uh, cannabis. What does govern cannabis is our zero tolerance uh, resolution okay. and our substance abuse ordinance. So we have two other ordinances that govern oh, okay. cannabis specifically, not not the hemp. And That's so the it doesn't address, but through our uh, zero tolerance resolution and our substance abuse ordinance. So covered. if the tribe were to decide to want to cultivate cannabis, you'd have to change those two major uh, yes. ordinances before that would actually be a feasibility. Correct. Okay. 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 Councilman yes. Aubrey wants to come. Yes. I just wanted to get back to Papa and Barkley. Mm -hmm. And they're going to import the hemp plant into the fish plant. And then they'll take that and press the plant and turn it into resin. And from that resin, they'll take it and, and, and ship it to their market and have all their products made. So that's what we were looking into. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. No, thank you, Justin. <coughs> I just had a quick question, if I may. Okay. Oh no, we'll try with Ms. First. Well, we we we've been we've been very. Uh, Specific about our flyer, uh, those tribal citizens providing uh, public comment. Oh, uh, we put that on our flyer information, and we we, we put put that out there. And so we want to make sure we're staying to what we said to be transparent. Okay. I just have. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 Um, my name is Roberta Lindgren, and I am the district, and I have a few little tidbits that I found out about hemp. Uh, many people not only know it, but hemp is the most versatile plant in the world. Some of these uses include textiles, fuel, paper, food, and files. Fiber. If hemp was made illegally worldwide, it would potentially reverse global warming. Also, now with all this in mind, do you have people to do all this? Are you going to have training set up for individuals, the Europe people? Because I'm sure that they don't have that right now. No, we would we would have to create a, a, a hemp commission position, create a, a hemp board, um, absolutely. And we have that in mind, knowing those things have to be done. Um, knowing you also need funding 
uh, to get that up. And I think there is funding potentially in this economic endeavor that we could do that could potentially resolve that and to hire three new jobs and hire staff in training. Um, and also, Joe, I noticed you said you want everything with transparency. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. That's great because it hasn't been in the past. Okay. There's a lot of things that have been done that no one even knew about okay. that was being done. Now, this venture that we're going out into, mm -hmm. would it end up like that fishery building in Rakwa? For the sure. for the processing thing, yes. Yeah, that's for the for processing. We were we were looking at using the fish tank. And where is this all going to take place? I think some of this is the details that we haven't one hundred percent figured out. I think for processing, one of the only locations that make necessarily makes sense is the fish processing plant. Uh -huh. So we'd actually be doing the the processing. Uh, of the hemp there, that, that's kind of the proposal now. Um, the, lo the specific location for the hemp seed cultivation, we haven't narrowed down one specific spot for it, although I think we have a few ideas of parcels that currently have um, some sort of infrastructure on them so that we don't have to create any new footprints on our landscape. Okay, also I'm, um, I'm an HR person and I'm very strict on the, um, the experience these people have. Um, who would do the interview? Who did you have in the tribe that has knowledge enough to sit and interview someone? We would create a, a year off Department of Agriculture. That would be its own department as, as we get going. Yes. Um, and to hire staff in regard funding and money and stuff like that. We would also just long term, we would commingle our money. We want to keep it separate from this business adventure. Because I don't know if you notice, we put it out there where it, we're in our funds together. Um, but yeah, that's it. Let me, let me add to it, uh, Chair Quinn, and, and I'm not going to use anyone's name, but I think um, we have uh, a good amount of skilled laborers and, uh, and individuals who know both the cultivation side and the processing side. Um, I think more than we maybe even know, a part of our research we found, this is one of the industries that we actually do have uh, a good amount of, of skilled individuals that could, that could participate. And so How it's do one they of, get these skills? Um, through other various industries related to um, either hemp or, or cannabis or cannabis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, people, for coming down to our meeting. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you. Hi guys. Hey, good afternoon. John Wolf from the Clark District. I just have a, a question in regards to uh, the little uh, slideshow that we, we had, um, specifically in the, the development of the develop of the Department of Agriculture. Um, who's at the helm of developing that department? And how are they going to uh, arrive in hiring the executive director, the assistant director, and all the people underneath this, this uh, department head? Who decides who gets what job? Where do they come from? And something that Ali attached on is how did they acquire their knowledge? Is there a resume that's visible that we can look at as a whole? Um, not just as a part, whoever's doing the hiring should have uh, transparency in what they know and how to hire the right people for the right positions to make this venture a success instead of a question mark. Um, land acquisition, is there enough land acquisition of monies available to make this uh, part of your plan uh, happen? 
um, and product development, who makes these decisions and how are they accountable and transparent to what they do? Uh, what is the TCU parity? I don't understand that part. Uh, it's something to do with uni uh, tribal universities. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And I'm not getting any nod yeah. heads. Sure. Or, yeah. Hold on. Well, I wanted you to finish your, your question. Okay. Yeah. And then the last is the Tribal Advisory Committee. Who is that? How did they get there? Uh, what is their background, history of knowledge, and sure. how are they positively working with our main council to develop uh, that committee? And who are who are going to be the selected members to be on that committee? What capacity do they have to be able to converse and to uh, um, make a lot of decisions that has to be made in the Office of Tribal Relations? And who are they? Uh, so can you answer those questions or? Well, thank, this time, or thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Wolf. I, uh, I thank you for your questions, and they're, they're good questions. Uh, keep the theme going. Full transparency is we actually haven't dug into that part of it yet. Uh, that's uh, that detail of who we're hiring, who's going to manage it. We know the job positions that are required. Uh, we know, uh, but to, to answer you straight, but we, we haven't digged into that yet. We know we're going to create a year uh, agricultural department. You're going to, we're going to need an individual out of there. And, and moving further down the road, it, it opens the doors. We're talking about hemp now. I want to talk about other things of agriculture, knowing that uh, we have uh, healthy foods that we can get into that could serve under that agriculture department. And so regarding those comments, we, we haven't had those discussions yet. We wanted to make, to make sure we're, we're sharing this uh, adventure, uh, economic endeavor with you. So but those are good questions. So that these are the outline. Correct. And then the, what I've got here as far as questions. Yeah, yeah you're, you're a little ahead of us. You're, 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 you're a little ahead of us. We haven't done, uh, we haven't done. Uh, I got Councilmember member cool. um, So just on the tribal advisory committees, the US government has a number of um, tribal advisory committees that they um, have across the board for different departments and so for this particular thing it, they have um, put together a tribal advisory committee and what they do is it, it showed that they have 11 members and they take applications from um, throughout the country to for people to sit on this and it's actually the government that um, chooses who's going to sit on these um, advisory committees but we can go and really make it known that we we do want to sit on that but that is something that we have to work on it and look into still vice chair marsh i think this is one of the things that makes uh transparency a tricky uh principle to actually implement because it's there's a i was speaking before about this balance of how far down any endeavor do we go before we start bringing the membership in uh, and before we let them know, we, you know, part of it is we want, we need to learn as much as we can to have intelligent conversations to bring the membership uh, the information, but not so far down the line that we've already made all these decisions and hired people and have the whole process. And so we're, I think, as a council, we are working that out now. And so we're, uh, I think, we're ahead of some of the questions we can answer easily. We're behind on answering the more detailed questions of exactly that. But I, I wanted to say that to say this as well. Uh, this will be this will potentially be a new uh, business that we start but we also it is a process that we all need to get used to uh, we have an 8a um, process we're going to be going through as well which will be similar to to this one as far as as far as processing a new corporation or a new uh, a new business so this is our our him town halls but I would uh, for the org district you know, hopefully you get see, used to seeing us within the next couple of years, because I'm sure we're going to be doing many, many more of these. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walters. Oh, it does District. Um, just, just a couple of things. Um, 
Uh, one thing that kind of troubles me, and I've heard in the community as well, I'm not the only one, but you know, our, um, our, our uh, history of successful enterprises is not so shiny. And here we are, you know, um, at one hand, I'd say, well, can't we concentrate on making the businesses that we already have profitable? And maybe they can't be. Um, I don't know. I don't know enough about that. So, so, so that's a concern. So, you know, and I'm not naysaying. I'm not saying we can't try. I'm just saying, how, what are we going to do differently for this enterprise? Should we go forward? It sounds like we will. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a believer in, in hemp. I've used, um, I have an autoimmune disease and sometimes I get pain in my joints and I've used the topical and I've used the under the tongue drops and, you know, it wasn't a miracle thing, but I, I think it helped. So I, I'm not being a naysayer here at all, but you can't argue with the fact that our previous business experiences um, have been less than stellar. How, what's your response to that? Joke. Uh, <laughs> thank, you, thank you for your question. I won't disagree with that. I also am the president of the YADC board, but I'm not gonna run from it either. When I say that comment is, I, I think there is a, a balance act when we first got started, which was very good, but uh, sometimes we tend to buy property because we need our land, and then we look second as a business opportunity. And for me, as my platform, I'm putting business right on front. Uh, I think this council, uh, we're looking at a number of business opportunities. We did a feasibility study on some other things to see if it's profitable. We're asking for tax returns. We are literally Let's put that business mind frame up front and look and see how it is profitable and then buy land from those profits, not vice versa the other round. Um, knowing that this is a over a, a $2 million industry, we're hearing that it could eventually get to a $1 billion issue by 2025. Um, I want a piece of that pie. I, I, um, I, I think that opportunity is there. We always weigh the risk versus the reward. Um, so yeah, I think that part of our due diligence that we have been doing for the last two to three months. Um, so there's a, a huge opportunity knowing that our business is what they make is uh, very minimal, but also they are a business still. I do agree we should fix those, but at the same time, we should also move forward too with also other economic endeavors. Right. So to answer your question is the, the, the signals that we've seen so far and that we're hearing on the trail, this is a boom, but at the same time, what goes up must come down, right? So we know that regarding the CBD oil, I think that's the rush, but at the same time, we were like, let's take those profits and buy other economic business off the reservation or on the reservation to make sure we're leveraging, utilizing that economic mindset. And so okay. I try to answer as much as I can. Yeah, that's kind of long, but I got it. Sure. I think that was good. Thank you, Joe. Um, yeah, so um, the other thing is, what is this enterprise going to cost us? What's it, what, what, are we looking at a dollar amount here? How much is it? And where is it? And where is it coming from? Mm -hmm. sure. I think the, the other part that's exciting about both of these proposals is there's, there's pretty minimal uh, initial investment uh, for the, the the hemp seed uh, proposal it's around the same price range as a feasibility study um, which is 30, 30, 30, 30 to forty thousand dollars yeah for the seed for the to, to get off the ground and keep in mind what we said the dollar for the seeds were yeah uh, run those numbers and uh, and so that's why we I get a little excited about the seeds what what the risk is for, as Vice Chair mentioned, we spend thirty to forty thousand on feasible business plans, and knowing that the rate of return on the growth side, but we know there's after you pay operations net, it, it looks promising. Okay. Um, on the on the processing side, probably a little bit less than that. Mm -hmm. But we so have the equipment was, that it, it requires for that processing in the old fish plant. If that's what we do. Are we buying that? Are they providing that? What's happening there? I, again, I think one of the details that we haven't dug into deep yet of those negotiations.